Hello, hello to all you beautiful souls. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure this is going all right here. I'm gonna leave this public just for a second. Just for now. I guess it would really depend how things go in the future. Mars and uh, Mars and Venus are gonna be kissing in the sky tomorrow early morning so if your skies are clear you could probably go out and see mars and jupiter conjunction and right now we have uh saturn's in retrograde as well as jupiter's in retrograde pluto is also in retrograde in sagittarius in 13 sun astrology Saturn's in Capricorn, and Jupiter's in Aquarius. So our new moon actually oh, is in Gemini. The sun is in Gemini with Mercury. So I would imagine, I can look right now. It's air energy. Mercury is ruled by Gemini as well. Mercury ruled by Gemini. Let me see where the moon is right quick. Let me see. I got sky gazing gaps for this. Let, let me see real quick. Now, I use a star gazing up here that shows me that the moon is currently in Leo. I can also check for my selfie in the Skyview Light app. It's kind of like a, let me see. It's like a telescope. So the moon is currently, the new moon is currently fresh in Leo. And Mars and Venus are right there too. I'll show you. I'll show you. They're right there, three together. Power of three. Mars. There's the moon in Leo. And there's the Mars and Venus right there. Right now. Conjunct. Lining up. No joke. Mars and Venus. Exiting Cancer. Which means family. The great kiss and the great gig in the sky. It truly is written in the sky in 13 sign astrology. It truly, truly is. I gotta focus my energy one way so that I don't get depleted. I was wearing myself too thin, and I think I was codependently enabling a lot of people who weren't willing to do their work. 
I know many people who are willing to do their work. And I'm so grateful. I guess I can't see the comments when I stream to Twitter. If it's double streaming. So let's get into this reading here. Let's go ahead and do a grief card. Lots of people are healing grief right now. Lots of people are grieving in general. I can't see any comments. I guess I'll have to see them over on the... That's better for no distractions, actually. I've realized that much of humanity doesn't know the art of listening. They don't know about a talking stick, let alone how to use it. So I'm very grateful. You know, I was trying to teach from books, spiritual books, spiritual healing for two years on YouTube. And when I first started, there was no one there. So I could get through an entire book in record time. But now it seemed like there were so many people asking questions while I'm trying to read two pages of a book every day. It took me three hours. I asked them if they could hold their questions till the end and some of them just aren't listening. So we're gonna focus our energy in only one place. Understanding grief here with these grief cards. Your grief is unique because your loss reflects a unique love you experienced. No one knows your exact grief because no one but you felt your exact love. Remember that love today for you and only you. Now, lots of people wouldn't have a clue what it's like to walk this world without your child, especially when you only had one. Or what it's like to find your child no longer breathing cold and blue on the floor. September the 9th, 2020. Many people wouldn't know what it's like to call your daughter Kinney. Or what it would be like to have to change your identity to feel safe in this world. In loving memory of my angel, Kenny, Kayla Nicole Orbit. Or what I went through to keep my child safe and alive. moment for all those addicts still suffering. All those people we've lost too soon. A moment of silence. I'm so grateful for all of you that stick through healing and do our work. Do our work. I hope everybody's learning to trust themselves, love themselves, and focus on healing ourselves. That truly is our purpose. Our purpose isn't to come here for worldly acceptance, worldly approval or to find any truth outside of ourselves. Our job is to love ourselves and remember who we are and who I am says we are. 
not the world or its waves. So let's get a couple of these angel cards here. Forgiveness. Holding on to a past hurt is preventing you from moving forward and achieving your heart's desires. Let it go. Forgiveness does not mean that you condone another's actions. It simply means that you are no longer willing to be a perpetual victim to a particular person or event. Blame is a waste of your precious energy. Oh, yes. Bless it. Bless and surrender the past for in doing so. You will reclaim the joy of life. Actually, we better shift our Mars and Venus into Leo. I forgot to change that card. The moon's in Leo, too. I don't have two Leo cards. Leo is a fire energy. Here is Leo Sagittarius. Well, that's going to have to go right there for now. Oh, fire and water. Look at that. Jupiter, who's ruled by Sagittarius and Pisces. Jupiter originally was Pisces. Jupiter. Jupiter is known as ruling Sagittarius, which is where Pluto is. A lot of people in the Western world have no idea about Vedic or 13 sign Eastern astrology. Vedic astrology. Let alone 13 sign. It's very hard to try to teach some people that aren't open to it. I tried in vain for so long. I sure the heck did try in vain for long enough. I tried teaching people that are just so tropical that they don't want any of that information. So that's fine. We can't force people to be open to the things that we would like them to. And we can't like berate them or call them names for not wanting it. We cannot force information on people. Nurture your inner child and begin to express the awesome beauty that you hold within you. We live in a world where a formula exists for everything, yet love and creativity have no formula. They do not need to be studied, simply nurtured, regularly set aside, sometime to just play. Oh, yes, because all work and no play makes all of us dull boys and girls. Wouldn't you say so? Who loves to just work all the time? Not me. All work and no play makes me a very dull girl. Trust your intuition, right? Trust your intuition and know that what seems logical may not necessarily be right. The answer to your question lies inside your heart. Endless possibilities exist for you. Stop trying to work it all out and feel your way through. We, your angels, will guide you. Trust your feelings and feel no, what feels right is right. Feel, don't think so much. Humans are searching Google and DuckDuckGo. They're searching the fake book and the news for the truth. Not inside. They don't trust themselves. They don't love themselves. Most of them. Some of them are spreading absolutely horrible news and lies at that. Yes, the heck they are. It's tragic what's going on. When fear, chaos, and confusion has taken over the whole world, we know the Prince of Lies is on the loose, a.k.a. the devil. That's what the Bible says is the devil, the test in the wilderness with the devil. 
The enemy seeks to steal, kill, and destroy the mind. Prowls around like a roaring lion, it even says. Yeah. That's First Peter 5 and 8. Don't be confused by this world or its ways. That's uh, Romans. Do not be conformed to this world or its ways, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured on the cross. He endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Is Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Mars and Venus. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, is Isaiah 41 and 10. Do not fear, little flock, is the loving words of Christ cards. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble, is Psalm 46 and 1. We are so grateful for all these love and healing messages that come in a wide variety of universal healing. Some people are afraid of these cards. It kind of blows my mind. I am I am blown away that people are afraid of cards. And judge a card with pictures and words. That say the same message. I've been trying to say the same message in a thousand languages. It's pretty hard to speak universal love to the whole world. Universal, unconditional. Because if you love the left behind like Christ did, if you choose the addicts, the people who are holier than thou might think that they're better than all of us. And that God chose them, not us. It's kind of funny how the Christians and the Catholics and the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Baptists and all of them think that they're the 144,000 chosen ones while they're going around belittling people who use cards, judging. When Christ said, uh, do not judge, that's what Christ did say. Your Heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things, said Matthew 6 and 32. These are the loving words of Christ. Your loving heavenly father knows. Elohim, Elohim, why hast thou forsaken me? You know that the churches and religions are looking at the skies now, watching the eclipses, wouldn't you say? They didn't want nothing to do with astrology not that long ago. But lots of them are starting to learn it now. Only God can judge me. Only God. That's what Tupac said. Only God can judge me. Only Jesus set me free. Not this world. Not its ways. The Lion of, of Judah. See, the J wasn't even invented until the 1600s. Yahshua. The J sound. It was a y back then. This world is so very confused about words. You know why the letter A means nothing in China? Because I guess they speak Chinese. Knock and it shall be opened unto you is Matthew 7 and 7. Matthew 7, 7. Holy, holy, holy. Ooh, it's a my seven year baptism. Hallelujah. Forgive. And you shall be forgiven. Is Luke 6. 37. If nobody's seen the Mary Magdalene movie with uh, 
Yahshua and Miriam. It's got Joaquin Phoenix plays uh, Yahshua. And Maruni Mara plays um, Mary Magdalene, Miriam. Jesus asked the woman who's still angry that her sister, her dear sister friend, was raped and taken down to the river and beaten and drowned for adultery. And Jesus asked her how it feels to hold all that hate in her heart, to hold on to it. Because if you truly want to enter the kingdom of heaven, right here on earth, we have to let go. Holding on to anger and all those things can make us very, very sick people. Very, very sick people. Is that so blurry? I'm trying to see this. I can't see any comments. That's kind of amazing. Kind of unbelievable what's going on in this world. All right. Let's get one of our language of letting go cards. And this is, these are from the book, Melody Beatty, the language of letting go. We use this in our treatment recovery classes. My focus is for abuse survivors. Grateful addicts in recovery, healing and shame and loving ourselves. Letting go of panic. Oh, yes, that's a good one to let go of. Panic. Look, she's just like taking a moment to go inward, floating in the water, even under the new moon. Today, we will not be overwhelmed by panic. Panic will take our mind off our goals. It's normal to feel panic, but we simply feel it and let it go we can get back on track by treading water until we regain our composure yes if you start to go under and you panic you're probably going to drown but if you just relax right i relax and know that all is well i have panic disorder so remembering to breathe and take control of my own breath and my own mind is more powerful by using I breathe, I am safe, I am free, I am forgiven, I have a purpose. I move forward, I live. 1 Corinthians 15 and 10 is by the grace of God, I am what I am. The power of I am, the power of I am statements in the midst of people torturing my child's mind, I could not get my child to say those words. I breathe. I am safe. That statement alone has power. I am the one I need to forgive. I forgive me. I love me. So it doesn't really matter what the rest of the world thinks, does it? If my God loves me and my Jesus forgives me, and I love me and forgive me. Then what is it to this world? And their opinions and their false expectations appearing real. F-E-A-R. False evidence appearing real. 
I'm just trying to get to the ocean, but August 19th, that's it. Ooh, the whole world can gossip about you. Lots of people are taking things very personally. And I'm really doing my best to not take things personally in the middle of this world chaos. The battle for the mind is no joke. Some people are obsessed and addicted to finding the truth, judging everyone from the blue team to the red team. They can't even look in the mirror. They're too absorbed in social media or the news. No joke. Too busy searching for the truth. Don't make assumptions. That's agreement number three. Eliminate gossip. Making assumptions is a setup for suffering because usually we gossip about our assumptions. We make assumptions and believe we are right. Then we defend our assumptions and try to make others wrong. What if we all just agree to disagree? What if we, what if we really don't have to argue? What if we could just say, oh, I never thought of it that way. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, wow. What a cool uh, perception. Because truly, that is what it's all about. It's perception. Your truth is not my truth. My truth is not your truth. It's my story. That's why they have character witnesses in, at the scene of a crime. And they ask everyone that was there what they saw. Because one person re might remember the color of someone's shirt. And another might remember the license plate. And one might have seen a tall man. And another might have seen a short man. When it comes down to it, it's pretty much all perception. One side of a story and another, right? Become immune to poison. Don't take anything personally as agreement number two. Many people have a really hard time with this one. Lots of people don't even know agreement one, and that's to be impeccable with your, your word. I've taught these. I taught it six times over on YouTube. Twice on Facebook before. Uh, I went over to YouTube for the past two years. The whole world can gossip about you, and if you don't take it personally, you are immune. Immunity to poison in the middle of the hill is the gift of the second agreement. Yes, it is. Ooh, another don't take it personally. Love and respect yourself above all else, please. All of this worldly information news is non-essential for our healing and ascension. Absolutely non-essential. You can be aware of 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 uh, the weather of things going on. You can be an observer, right? But we don't have to overreact. We don't have to avoid those things. We don't have to take the shot if we don't want to. I've realized some people are obsessed with it. Some people are getting the shot to feel safe or to travel. Some do not want it. Me, I avoid the doctors like my life depends on it. Because they would love to give me some psych meds. No, thank you. I don't want to be 20, 20, 24 hours to go. I don't want to be sedated. Nothing to do, nowhere to go. Oh, oh. I don't want to be sedated. You are never responsible for the actions of others. But if you are responsible, but you are responsible for you. If someone is not treating you with love and respect, it is a gift if they walk away from you. 
You may hurt for a while, but your heart will eventually heal. Yes, and we have, there are seven stages of grief. You break them down. There actually are five stages. Um, but if they expand them and break them down a little bit, there are seven. I'll briefly touch upon those for a second. There's also traumatic bereavement, traumatic grief. When a shocking, tragic event happens, and you lose someone that you really love, someone that's very important to you, it can also be a breakup. Grief is the loss of anything that you love. It could be an animal, it could be a home, it could be dogs. I mean, it could be a person. It could be a boyfriend. It could be your child. It could be your mother. It could be anything. Now, psychologically, any parent separated from a child is grieving. Whether that child is alive or has left this earthly realm. Grief is grief. Grief is the loss of anything that we love. I took grief classes in prison. The first stage of the seven stages of grief are shock and denial. This is a state of disbelief and numbed feelings. While I was in this stage, people ran into my child's room and started disposing of and taking things before I even had a moment to digest the fact that I just found my child cold and blue on the floor. So I felt quite a bit of pain and betrayal when I got to the pain and guilt part. The next stage after pain and guilt is anger and bargaining. Well, I was angry, but I didn't try to bargain. I accepted that my child ascended. But in those shocking moments, we tend to compartmentalize our memories in a part of our brain. And we might have flashbacks and memories years later when they surface. It depends how long we go avoiding them and how long we deny our feelings our healing and whether we distract fix manage or control anything outside of ourselves instead of healing ourselves so i am so proud of us who sit there in our pain process it allow it allow our tears the next stage is depression it's only been 10 months since my child ascended this world my child's spirit is not dead it's very much well alive It's just not in that human body suffering anymore. I'd be a liar if I said I don't sometimes wish I could just ascend already. I finally learned how to start loving myself instead of trying to kill myself or drown myself in mind numbing 
emotion numbing drugs and alcohol opiates benzodiazepines or those little pills from the doctor and all their labels and misdiagnosis the upward turn would be the next stage in the seven stages of grief the upward turn the next stage is reconstruction and working through. So that's probably where I'm at. It's kind of funny because in my acceptance stage was there with the bargaining. Instead of bargaining, I was accepting, I did accept. Instead of bargaining. Now I'm just barely seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. I want to take my child's ashes to the ocean. <laughs> By August 19th, my child's birthday. And I've kind of had everyone under the sun trying to sway me from going. Oh, just don't go. Oh, don't leave during a pandemic. Some of them say, oh, you should wait till Mars is out of retrograde. Mercury, wait till Mercury is out of retrograde. All these humans have all these laws. They don't know I've just been hopping trains since I was 16 fearlessly. I don't have the fear and worry that half of these humans. I have been homeless. I have been an addict. I know <laughs> how to survive. It's funny, I'm 41 years old. <laughs> and all these people that don't really know me think they know me and what's best for me. And they sure love telling me what to do. They love being able to guide me when they didn't even do their own stuff. Guide me away from my heart and my calling. Trying to keep me from taking my child's ashes to the ocean. They don't even understand. It's It's been almost a year and two months. I've been just trying to get to the ocean. Oh, but you gotta do this. Oh, but you gotta do this. No. Actually, I don't. <laughs> and I don't have to listen to you. At all. I'm going to take one of these back silver feelings. Take one of these so I can put these back. These are uh, dialectal behavior therapy cards. For people who have a problem with the... With, uh, any type of behaviors and personality uh, disorders we might have picked up along the way. I have a feeling that borderline personality disorder is the most common, most commonly misdiagnosed as bipolar disorder. It's a lack of identity, lack of emotional self. I think most of these are personality disorders that shaped in our environment growing up, no matter who raised us. If we weren't taught our coping skills and all these healthy relationships, healthy parenting, all these wonderful things that we were not taught in school. Sometimes distress checks us out of the moment. Yes, so always ground yourself. If you start feeling unreal or are drifting out of the moment, try some of the following grounding skills. Obs one, observe and describe who and what is around you now. The more detail, no matter how small, the better. Oh yes, that's what my psychotherapist had me doing. Describe, wait, right here too. Work your senses. Name what you can see, hear, smell and touch right here and now three breathe slowly and deeply saying the word here to yourself as you breathe in and the word now as you breathe out so go ahead and take a deep breath in. 
through your nose is the best way. And hold. And exhale. All of our worries about the past or the future. We are here now. We are safe. We breathe right. Number four says get up and move your body mindfully. Noticing the connection between your movement and the physical environment. Absolutely. Actually, remove these. Our other DBT card that came out. We are so grateful just even for the breath of life, all these small things we might forget to be grateful for. Step one to a wise mind. This is the dialectal behavioral therapy for clients and therapists. There are two steps to get yourself into wise mind. In step one, what you do is observe and describe and how you do that is non-judgmentally and one mindfully. To observe means to notice as things are without adding or subtracting. To describe means putting words on your observations like you are a reporter. Yes. When you observe, observe and describe, do so non-judgmentally and stay focused one mindfully. Practice this process right now by observing and describing your surroundings, thoughts, feelings, or anything you choose. Your own thoughts. Journaling is very, very powerful and important. Not, not even taking our frustrations out on the world. I'm noticing how many people get on the internet and take their angers out on other people. They just go on social media looking to pick on people, looking to mess with people. There are so many imposters and illusions out there. It's a darn shame when we have to change our identity. Absolutely. Facts over feelings. When we're caught, this is uh, cognitive behavioral therapy cards. When we're caught up in the grip, caught in the grip of depression, our feelings often lie to us. Now, depression has many levels. There's suicidal depression, and there's depression where you might just not have the energy to do much. There's depression where you could be stuck in your bed all day or stuck in your chair. Watching videos, watching the telly, watching TV, wishing you were the people in the shows. And it's different levels of depression. There's depression that you never leave your house. That's like agoraphobia even. Um, all these different. Like I prefer to be at the park. I, do, I haven't even gone in the stores in a long time uh, to go shopping for groceries. I learned to, to avoid the mask police. I like to breathe with my trauma and anxiety. I was having breakdowns, nervous breakdowns in Walmart um, after my child passed away. Looking at all the things I could buy that would never replace my child. And I'm not willing to sacrifice my breath and being able to breathe just to buy something from any store. No thanks. They lost their customer is what they lost. Lots of us did. Started shopping from home. Doing everything from home. So we don't get harassed for breathing. The lack of empathy and compassion for all of us trauma survivors. 
it says disabled people shouldn't have to be forced to wear a mask right on illinois.gov so it shouldn't be up to a business whether i breathe or not oh let me get back to this and when we're caught in the grip of depression our feelings often lie to us and things feel true that aren't actually true we may feel like a failure so we conclude we are a failure oh yeah so the reverse mask shaming the reverse shaming in this whole situation has been out of this world people shame me for not wearing a mask or we may feel hopeless so we assume our problems really are hopeless separating feelings from facts can provide a powerful tool for recovery start a journal so here's the homework write down every time you see something positive in yourself someone else or the world focusing on positivity lots of people are focusing on the negative and that's where their mind is going to stay and they're probably very depressed waiting for the end of the world since depression makes it hard to see positives ask a friend family member or group member to help yes if you're stuck I suggest talk therapy for anyone healing uh, not medication it's actually talking that gets the, the words out that gets the memories out that processes all of the things we might have avoided for so long we could even avoid it with social media addiction technology addiction seeking outside approval from other people as well see i've been taking doing self-image classes lifestyle redirection all of my classes and things i did in treatment centers in prison taught me far more than a school ever did algebra now I can't see comments from this prism app so I guess in movie next time I'll try StreamYard, and we'll see let's get one of these moon cards before we do a heal yourself mystical healing I'm just kind of going to see how this goes. Over here, I was getting so much persecution <laughs> over on YouTube that I have to really use my energy wisely. It's easier for me to answer questions when I'm not live. It doesn't interrupt my teaching. It's absolutely best for me to answer questions about healing off to the side after teaching after teaching not during not while reading a book not in the middle of a quest a page fruition on the harvest moon 37 it's the queen of the moon oracle so if we want to manifest things even new beginnings we have to let go of the old. Fruition 37. The harvest moon. It's actually harvest season over here because I've been growing all winter. All winter. I here in Illinois, it's a medical cannabis card, 2020. I guess the great spirit just knew I was gonna need, need to be harvesting after I tried to teach my child. My child was 22 years old, so it wasn't a child. My adult trauma survivor, sex abuse survivor, so we are physical, brutal, physical abuse and mental torture emotional verbal abuse 
It's called religious abuse and spiritual abuse. And no amount of segments could ever heal those types of wounds. See the harvest moon here. As the seasons turn, there is always a time when all the potential of spring begins. Beginnings is manifest. The crops grow tall and are ready to harvest. And they have done this from a fallow field into which we have planted seeds. Yes, it depends on what we planted, right? The seeds have flowered and now there is fruit to pick. It is time for the harvest. So the mantra for this card is, I welcome the joyous fruition of all the intentions I see. When we are able to bring something to fruition, whether it be a planting, a project, or a change in ourselves. It is the perfect time to celebrate all that we are grateful for, to mark our achievement. We may have worked very hard to bring this new situation into reality. We may have been patient in the way we have worked over time and sacrificed much to make it happen. The harvest moon is the time to be happy about our success and to share it with others. Our ancestors would dance and sing to, and have community festivals of thanks, all to celebrate the fruition of all that hard work and to thank their go the gods and goddesses for their assistance. These times of high energy are also times to really focus on your body as they can be quite taxing on our systems. If we don't take care, it is often the time we can get ill. So make sure that you water and love and care for yourself always feed your mind body and soul good soul foods right healthy foods i struggle with a uh, sugar addiction i have for a very long time that's an imbalance in my sacral chakra this moon normally falls on the moon closest to the autumn equinox in the northern hemisphere so the companion stone or metal for that is Garnet, garnet, absolutely. So let's see here we are. I'm gonna do a mystical healing and an herb oracle. And then probably wrap this up. This is kind of like a, a test as I made my way back over to this, uh, this area, these areas. I'm changing my focus so I can not repeat all of the things I've already taught over and over. Oh, we thank you, Spirit, for these lovely messages to our spirit guides and our guardian angels. We are so grateful for all these healing messages. Oh, dang, this is listen to your intuition. Yes, it is. Actually, let's put this right here. that's your intuition card right there the intuition card is in the building I've been practicing my British accent I've got a lot of beautiful British uh, subscribers over on YouTube but I'm not gonna use all my energy all over the place anymore I've been listening to their lovely accent I love the way they say my name it sounds like Eva, Eva, instead of Heather. It's very hard in America, the R. The R, it's a hard R. Little children can't even say my name. They call me. Heather, Heather, or Hedda. They can't even say it. It's a very hard language in english is the hardest language for people who are not native english speakers to learn english is the hardest language oh she's becoming one with the animals yes she is animal whisperer yes listen to your intuition she's very connected Oh, she's even holding the egg of the Divine Feminine. That's sign of fertility. 
Your intuition is constantly sending you messages. You're being asked to become aware of what your inner wisdom is trying to tell you about your health and your intimate as well as work-related relationships. There are particular aspects of your relationships that need attention and a new approach. There are certain people and experiences that you have outgrown. Change is coming and you will need to make healthier choices. Oh, I love that song by the sound. I think it's the sounds of blackness. Gospel of blackness. Hold on. Change is coming. I said don't worry about a thing. I love that song. Change is coming and you will need to make healthier choices. If you open the door to possibility, new people will appear in your life and they will be able to offer you a different perspective on how to live, love, and work. Your body is also trying to give you a message about your health. There are signs and symbols all around you. It's your job to learn how to decipher them. When you awaken your heart chakra correctly, your heart, you don't even have to call it a chakra if you don't believe in chakras or you don't know what chakras are. When you awaken your heart correctly, your intuition can flourish and you will know the difference between an illusion and a real spiritual perception. The action here for card 20, listen to your intuition, says there are various ways to develop your intuition. The most important areas to work on are opening your heart to love and developing your concentration and discernment, which is a very powerful gift. And that's in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Everyone's probably familiar with chapter 13, which is the love chapter. But the chapter before that talks about our spiritual gifts. And discernment is a biblical spiritual gift as well. It's why we're given a gut instinct. Chemicals and lots of preservatives and uh, too much distraction in this world can actually block our gift of discernment. And disrupt it. So I'm going to put this down. Because it says start by placing your hands on your heart. Slow down your breathing. And imagine entering into the depth of your heart. Imagine your heart is like a portal to the divine. And so are your lungs, your physical heart. But your lungs, your breath of life, is a connection to the spirit. Visualize an extremely wise teacher. And ask this teacher what wisdom they can offer you about your relationships. All of them. Then place your hands on a part of body, of your body, where you have challenges, and ask, what thought would be stored here? It might be a place that you have pain. Ask your body, what feeling would be here? What memory would reside here? Then work on changing your thinking, releasing blocked feelings, and seeing new points of view. So that's a wonderful one. Think of your body as a human energy temple. Think of yourself as a power line, to say the least. A power line. So if you're blocked, and maybe you're just taking 
in this world and not giving. Or maybe some of us like myself might have gave ourselves away and we have been resistant to let people do stuff for us or receive gifts without giving back. Some of us might have gave ourselves away codependently enabling others to stay stuck in their ways. We didn't know our worth. We didn't know our healthy boundaries. We didn't honor ourselves, take care of ourselves. We did not listen to our body. We might have been so busy distracting from doing our own work by taking care of everyone else but ourselves. So I'm Heather and I struggle with codependency and self-love, self-worth. I'm a grateful recovering addict, ex-addict. I'm grateful, ex-addict and recovering. Doing my best. Thank you, Sparrow, for one of these herb oracles. Let's see what herb we can work with today. Marshmallow root. That's actually wonderful for a cough. Marshmallow root. It's in my organic uh, cough medicines by Zarbies. That marshmallow root in the English ivy. Marshmallow. So if anybody has congestion, so I need to get some that tell the medicinal benefits. This is a magical herb oracle that doesn't really tell about the medicinal benefits, and that's really what I'm looking for. So, 12. Compassion. I want to get to teaching about all of the herbs I use um, instead of psychotropics or chemicals. The things that are helping with my anxiety and all the things that are I'm finally learning to detox and digest from. All of those things and what it took from as I adjusted for me to get to where I am today. Compassion. Oh man, here's more intuition. Trust your inner feelings and let them lead you a little more strongly. Spiritual energy will be very high. So perhaps fulfillment or illumination in this aspect of life will be easier to obtain. This is a time of giving, of looking out for others and taking a more supportive role. Remember that the more you give, the more you will receive and in ways that may be not apparent for the first instance. Listen more than you talk, give more than you take, and bend a little more than usual. So it says this is perennial plants native to Western Asia, North Africa, and Europe. And the flowers appear in summer and are white or li pale lilac. So the magical correspondences for this uses are protection, psychic abilities, attract good spirits, marriage, uh, persuasion. I don't think it's good to interfere with the free will of anyone else by persuasion or manipulation. That's probably going against the law of the universe usually. It just really depends, everything depends. If people are doing things for personal gain or if it's for authenticity. I don't think people should be swaying each other into anything in this world. Since we're all given free will and choice. And it has to do with calm. The deities associated with this are on top of the Mars card. And look at that. It's Mars compassion. Mars your heavenly father, Mars, the red planet, Mars, the war planet, Aries, the god of war, oh, I'm an Aries, Pisces, sun in 13, sign astrology, or Aries, Taurus in tropical, I'm on the cusp, but no matter what, 
fire and water. Compassion, Mars, have compassion, all the war energy. Aphrodite, Venus, and Athena as, as Althea. It says Althea, not Athena. The planet related to it is Venus, which is down there. And the signs are Taurus, Aries, Libra, and Scorpio. Because Venus rules Taurus and Libra. The element associated with this actual particular card is water. Not the sign of Taurus. Taurus is an earth sign. Venus is an air sign. The element of the air. It has to do a lot with the mind. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Marshmallow compassion spell. Having marshmallow nearby. When you perform. Now see we don't really. These spells are. I just, I just read it and see what it says. I don't do all this stuff at all. And I do not ever suggest interfering with the free will of another. These are for breaking spells, I would guess to say. And doing healing intentions for ourselves. Uh, having marshmallow nearby when you perform healing work even the word spell could be a turn off for many right will encourage good spirits and deities to assist you the flowers are particularly good for love love spells and blessings so you can speak all these wonderful affirmations to yourself and these blessings if you're not used to doing those that could be a very tricky thing for lots of people I know learning to speak positively and know that I was worthy and be believe those things was a very tricky thing for me to start speaking to myself. Marshmallow is also regarded as an herb of persuasion. And carrying some upon you will make others more likely to agree with you. See, I would just go ahead and scratch that out. That's not the goal of a lot of these things. I don't always agree with what these people say. Sometimes it can be difficult to feel or understand the situation of others. This spell will hope to open your heart safely so you will be of more assistance and find what it is they truly need. Well, I think we need to worry about ourselves and work on opening our heart. That goes with all of this. We can open clearly, honestly, what we need and what's best for us, honoring our space, our healthy boundaries. All of those things is very important. If you need compassion yourself, the spell will also open the door for this to come your way. So gather together. It says two tablespoons of dried marshmallow leaf, a cup of dried rose petals, two pink candles, and two rose quartz crystals. Draw yourself a warm bath and sprinkle in the dried marshmallow leaf and rose petals. Make sure you have chosen a quiet time when you will not be disturbed by anyone. Light the pink candles and have them near the bath and turn off any electric lighting and draw any window coverings. Lay in the bath with your eyes closed holding a rose quartz crystal in each hand and invite compassion into your heart. So in these times, that's when we do take our time for ourselves, and we do focus on ourselves, And we talk very kindly and lovingly to ourselves. I'm actually going to get the, one of these native spirit cards real quick before we go. I thank you all so much for being here. Whoever you are, I hope you know how specially essential you are in this world.
beloved beautiful angel we all are I think that's the most important message everyone matters we all matter no life is more holy or worthy than another no matter how much money they have no matter what kind of clothes they're wearing not one person in this world should ever feel less than anyone else or left behind and forgotten about that's just my perception and there are many that we've lost way too soon for lack of love in this world and compassion and lack of caring the song of the wild seems like this card just came out recently so we thank you spirit for these messages Thank you all so much for being here. Song of the Wild. Oh, hallelujah for these new beginnings in this Mars and Venus reading. New horizons await you. You are ready to savor the wonders of the world. Ooh, I better get a passport, huh? <laughs> we'll take it. Take some risks. Answer the call of the wild. Step out of your comfort zone ooh, and live passionately. Stick, take steps in the direction of freedom. Expand beyond your limitations and boundaries. Maybe it's time to take a journey or do something new and exciting. Woohoo! We will take it. Hallelujah. We claim this. Yes, we do. Your native spirit wants you to know you are entering a period of expansion and going beyond your self-imposed limitations. Even if you feel hesitant, this is the time to try something new and do things in a different way. You may even visit far off lands or wild natural places. Oh my gosh, how exciting. Adventure often entails risk, but without it, Life can become lackluster and stagnant. There's a vast, new, and wondrous vista just around the corner, but you'll never see it if you don't venture out. So the journey is to plan a trip, take some classes that get you out of your comfort zone, try new styles. Yeah, we have to be open to those things, right? Do the same things you've always done, but in a new and different way. Kind of like changing the way we pour our tea, or where we put something, or the habits in our lives. Maybe every day we get up and the first thing we do is be on our phone, and then we get stuck there for hours, right? Maybe we want to start a new habit of reading a couple meditation books silently to ourselves, and listening to the way the spirit speaks to us. Or maybe doing some morning yoga. Or yoga before bed. Stretch yourself out. Gentle massage on your own neck and shoulders. Gentle stretching. Push beyond your limits. Yoga masters concentrate on breath work. Inhale. As you're moving and exhale deep into your stretch push beyond your boundaries step out of character spend time in the wilderness yes I love to do yoga barefooted in the grass the lunatic is on the grass <laughs> yes so I'd really like to focus on uh, getting back into my Pilates and all of the things that I've been was doing that I haven't been doing daily. I struggle with suicidal depression. I've been hospitalized so many times for attempted suicide. And 
so some days I hop out of bed so I don't get stuck there. I jump out as soon as I wake up. Lots of days I don't even leave my house. But I do love to go to the park. I love to go in the wilderness. I love to go swing. I love to go talk to the kids. I love the animals. The children never have all these worldly worries and they really do not understand what's been going on. And I don't think any of them should have been forced to not breathe or get shots. Ever. I don't think anybody should have had to get a shot to go to school here in America. That means myself included. I definitely didn't consent to that. As a little baby. But I guess maybe we did sign up for all of this, huh? Let's get one of these universe as our backs. We'll get a couple of these and then we're going to wrap this up. So I thank you all so much for being here. This is just, just the beginning. We'll see. I think it might be best if I stream without the chat. And then I can answer questions as needed. We'll see how much faster we get through all of this. And people can chat in the comments below. I could even upload this over to YouTube once I save it. That's how lots of people have to start out for the first year. No live chat. Thank you, universe, for having our back. Thank you, great and wonderful spirit. Mother, Father, God, Goddess, Divine Holy Spirit. We are so grateful. My energy flows. Energy flows where my intention goes. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Whatever we focus on, we create. So if you're focused on the shots, if you're focused on how many numbers there have been, if you're focused on the news, that's who you're going to believe. It's a part of your belief system. If you focus on healing, that's also going to be the healing. Energy flows at where my intention goes. Thank you, universe, for these beautiful messages, all these beautiful souls doing our healing work. It's of utmost importance. Oh, hallelujah. I let go of the shadow of the past by seeing someone for the first time with the eyes of love. So whoever it might be in your life because the lord knows i have people in my life that i might still be angry at the presence of love will always cast out fear humans operate out of two emotions we either do or do not do everything based on love or fear Everything we do or do not do in this world stems from two emotions. So I love you all so much and I'm so grateful to be a part of this journey and to have you as a part of mine. So if you love this content, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment and let me know. I love you all so much. Have a blessed and beautiful night day, whatever it is, journey, wherever you are. I hope it's beautiful. Keep shining, superstars. I send you all peace that far surpasses all understanding from the healing heart of America.